Welcome to Les Lumineurs, New York. This is the second exhibition at our gallery on the Upper East Side, and it's entitled Byzantium and the West, Jewelry in the First Millennium. This exhibition focuses on jewelry over five centuries in Rome, in Constantinople or Byzantium, and then in Western Europe from about 200 to about 700 AD. There are approximately 40 rings, chains with pendants and earrings. Displays of jewelry to demonstrate wealth were widespread in the Roman Empire. You could even rent rings in Rome. Marshall tells of a dandy who adorned himself with rented rings, as many as six per finger. This key ring was probably a gift to a Roman soldier who in turn may have given it to his wife. The openwork technique of punched out letters in the gold requires painstaking workmanship. The letters read utere felix or wear it with luck. A lot of the rings in the exhibit contain precious stones Emeralds, sapphires, and pearls seem to have had imperial connotations. This beautiful hoop ring, for example, contains 11 closely matched emeralds that extend all the way around the hoop. Marriage rings originate in the Roman Empire and become Christianized with the conversion to Christianity. This exhibit has five marriage rings in it. It's not known whether they were used in the actual ceremonies, but they exist in literary records. This one is extraordinary. Not only is the carving remarkable, underneath you see the word omonia for harmony, but also the couple wears jewelry, the man a fibula and the woman earrings. Matched sets of jewelry are extremely rare this exhibit includes a matched set of five pieces made for an aristocratic Byzantine woman around 500 AD. There's a double-sided cross on a chain and two sets of earrings made by the same goldsmith as the chain. There are also two rings. One of the rings is a Byzantine marriage ring the couple portrayed on either side of a long cross. One of the stars of the Byzantine exhibition is this cross, which is just a little more than two inches high. It displays the high level of goldsmith work among Byzantine craftsmen. Christ appears in the center, embossed in high relief. Mary is portrayed on the left, John on the right, only three such crosses are known. Another by the same workshop is in the British Museum. The loop-in-loop -loop construction of the chain is quite sophisticated. It takes a modern, accomplished jeweler an hour to do one inch of chain. Look at how long this one is. The clasp, too, has beading and filigree work very delicately done. By the 5th and 6th centuries, barbarian tribes spread through Europe. To forge alliances with them, Byzantine dignitaries presented them with gifts, often jewelry. The jewelry also provided models to imitate. Hence, this architectural ring of Byzantine inspiration, or also this extraordinary ring showing dolphins grasping the bezel in their open mouths, garnets forming their fish eyes. Our story stops with the 8th century, which brought iconoclasm to Byzantium. Little jewelry was produced. At the same time, indigenous traditions developed in different directions in the West, and Byzantium became but a dim and distant presence.